Jacob. G'day Joel, long time follower. Just wanted to know what the differences are in the GTR for someone who rides a Vapor. I'm considering making the switch when I change over skis and wanted to get your take. Also, how does the new Nautique wake compare to the old shape? So I sort of did a little bit about the difference in, in the um, skis. I actually videoed myself riding that Omni. I don't know if I'm gonna put it up or not. The Connolly in comparison to a Radar rides much, much deeper and grips a whole lot more. The Vapor kind of slides around and the Connolly, you just point it where you wanna go. It's gonna grip and take you there. It's like it's on rails. The new Nautique, so the carbon fiber Nautique versus the 200, I would argue that the wake is pretty much a very similar shape but those micro tuners that they've got, it's filled in the trough itself. So the underlying wake is sort of very similar, even though it's a tiny bit smaller just because the boat's carbon fiber and it's lighter. But yeah, the really big difference and the thing that I noticed is the trough is filled in by those micro tuners and you bridge the gap from clean water to whitewash off the prop. I really like it. Like I used to trip a little bit on the 200 in the trough every now and again. And now, even if I am a bit too far out the front, you don't you don't trip, you just push through what is basically a flat wash. Um, Lana, would love to know what drew you to Connolly and the GTR over all the other brands. So yeah, it really was just riding all the brands and deciding that I liked the Connolly the best. And that's kind of my, that's my tip for anyone that's picking skis, like just ride them. Um, and then when you're riding them, don't judge them on how nice your first passes feel because like the Connolly is a very stiff ski and I would argue that if we made the Connolly super soft, it would feel better for most people on their first few passes. But that's not what we're building the ski for. We want you to do better at the end of your slalom set. And I mean, obviously you can go too stiff with a ski, but having a stiffer ski works much better when you've made a mistake and you need to correct it without the ski bouncing around underneath you. I mean, when I am testing a ski, which I do a lot, often um, if I'm given one that's a little bit soft and we always do like a completely blind test where if we've changed something, Doug, the legendary engineer from Connolly will send me sort of the one that we've changed plus a stock one and I'll ride them both and then sort of give feedback. So, I mean, it's not a biased opinion at that stage. And if I'm riding something that feels awesome on my first passes, and then struggles a bit later on, almost always, it's just a bit too soft. So yeah, just ride the skis and judge it on the end of your set. You've got to do that. It's very important for future progression. Charlie, do you change your ski setup depending on the water temperature and the depth of the water? If you do, what changes do you make? Yeah, so I do not. Very few of the pros do change their fin setups based on water depth and water temperature. I have seen people go for a little more wing in colder water that's kind of a little bit little common and then generally in cold water people will also attempt to sort of increase their surface area because cold water the ski rides a little higher and slips a little more so yeah people do kind of attempt to counteract that but i mean it's it's not i would argue very successful meaning that cold water is different like the way it skis is different um, and if you're trying to sort of adjust your ski to make it bite down in the water like it is when it's sort of warm. Um, you might get the ski to bite down in there for a bit, but eventually it comes back up and you're dealing with that slip again. So, I mean, when I'm, I mean, I haven't done a whole lot of cold water skiing, to be honest, um, so there's that as well. But when I'm skiing in cold water, I really just have to sort of accept the fact that the ski is going to slide a little more than what I'm used to. And you just let it happen and you do run less buoys. But yeah, you just kind of, accept the fact that it's going to slide instead of trying to like force it to get down in the water because I can force it to get down deep like it is when the water's warmer but it doesn't stay there it comes back out all righty Jimmy where can I demo a GTR if you're in Australia I can hook you up yeah even if you're not in my state I'll send you somewhere that has one um, in the states you might have to ask around a bit more um, but yeah we do demos Tom um, have you ever done a dry start on a single ski before once just to prove that I could I wasn't very good at it I'm a double boot skier so dry starts are pretty hard i convinced one of my mates to come out and try to do a dry start on my double boot setup and um we blew both his eardrums hey mick but um yeah i think the day that i did it i had someone else to ski on with a kicker so yeah um craig do you ever ski in a dry suit any ideas for something that might work yeah i have an o'neill dry suit feels fine i mean i ran 39 in it yeah, I basically ran the same scores in the dry suit. I didn't have a problem with it. I know some people really struggle in the dry suit, but yeah, it felt, felt fine for me. I mean, I would maybe 
say that it felt like you had sort of a few extra degree of wing on your fin because it sort of shuts you down pretty hard into the ball just because of the wind resistance. But I mean, yeah, get a dry suit. They're awesome. It's pretty warm here though. I don't really use it much. Greg Murphy, honest answer. Am I going to make it as a skier? <laughs> I don't know if I should keep going. This video is going to get very long, but I mean, if I was watching this seven years ago, I'd still be interested. So I will power through. Greg, Greg, has, Greg, you got a late start, mate. I'm gonna be honest, and your ski club, even though you're just starting skiing, is currently shut down, so it's not looking good for this season. <laughs> Maybe we'll reassess next season when you actually have a ski club to ski at. Hey, um, Pat. Hey, Joel. Hope all is well. How's the foot? I broke mine two years ago. My boots didn't release. I noticed yours don't release. They make me cringe. Do you use double boots? We've done enough of the boots. I might do, I'll do another video on the boots. Maddie, who's your favorite boat driver when practicing in the rain? That's a stitch up from Greg for sure. Anytime it's raining and my go-to drivers don't want to drive for me, I hit Greg up to come and drive. <laughs> Sometimes Greg doesn't even know there's a huge storm coming. Um, but yeah, thank you, Greg. You've been good. And um, your driving abilities um, are getting much better very fast. That's a compliment, right? Nah, Greg's good. Most of the time, like with someone's driving, you sort of don't even bother attempting to change them much because it's just all about getting them in the middle. Um, and once you've done that, you know, it's not until someone is pretty good and able to drive in the middle that you even bother teaching them any form of rhythm. So yeah, Greg, you, you're doing good. Thank you. Do you know any water ski clubs in Canberra or is that state not cool enough for water skiing? Um, yeah. So I saw this question. I looked it up. Water ski act.com.au or act water ski on facebook yeah that's where you need to go 